URL filtering and file blocking profiles. Okay everyone, so in this video we're going to take a look at URL filtering and file blocking profiles on the Palo Alto firewall. We're going to configure two profiles. One is going to be the URL filtering profile and then the next one will be a file blocking profile because we want to limit what the users can download from the internet. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay everyone, in our previous video we took a look at configuring antivirus and anti-spyware profiles. Now we need to enable URL filtering. We want to restrict access to specific websites for our internal users. And let's be more creative on this demonstration. I have a global insight to internet access policy. And the insight to internet access policy involves all my internet traffic from the inside to the outside. So all my users going to the outside, they're going to hit this particular policy because they're coming from the inside zone going to the outside. Now I want to restrict or I want to limit what websites can my organization access uh, internally. So let's go ahead and configure that profile. I'm going to go into URL filtering and we go into objects under security profiles URL filtering. And we mentioned earlier that we have a default profile that basically the Palo Alto will come with that predefined. And it shows that my categories as block for abuse, drugs, category, adult, etc. You have a command and control, which is basically the botnet category and websites that are participating in a botnet type of CNC attack. So this will be blocked by default. So let's go ahead and uh, configure a custom one. And if you are okay with how the Palo Alto is treating the default, you just need to enable that default and you're already protected. But in our case, we want to be a little bit more creative. We want to create a custom one. So let's click on add. And on my name, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Corp URL Filter Global. And here I am going to block this. So I'm just going to select this. And I'm going to block. And user credential submission. So if in the website requires a user to input his username and password, you can either block it or allow that. So you also have the opportunity to block that particular action. So if, for example, you're allowing, but you're blocking that, even though that you're allowing it, if the user needs to log in, it's not going to go anywhere. But you have the option to be granular with that. We're also going to block adult, and we're going to block alcohol and tobacco block. And then we want to block anything that has to do with piracy. So let's block that. And uh, we don't want employees looking for dating. Dating websites, not the time to do that. So we're going to block that. We're going to block gambling. We're not going to allow anyone to go to gambling websites in our corporate network. Hacking also, we don't want to do that. And um, we don't want people looking for jobs in our corp. So we're going to block that as well. Uh, malware, same here. And you see, you see the, uh, the idea. The idea is to select custom actions or change what the default action is by creating a new one. And we're just uh, blocking globally. So we're basically blocking inside to outside by just selecting here block. Fishing, same. And so let's go ahead and uh, click OK. And now we have that custom selection. And it's kind of uh, close to what the default selection is. But I just made this as my custom so you can take a look at how it's done if you need to do one custom one. And say for example, and this is a good case scenario, say for example, you block alcohol and tobacco. So it's being blocked. But there's a website inside alcohol and tobacco that not necessarily you want to have a block because it might be a customer that you're doing business with and they're in the alcohol and tobacco industry. Their website needs to be open. This is where overrides will help you to allow that while keeping everything else blocked. So you have the override. The override means I am going to override what I am blocking globally on the category. So this list of websites are handled by the Palo Alto uh, database. So the Palo Alto Cloud database will have the list of all websites that they are identifying to be alcohol and tobacco. And there might be cases where a website that you really need to have enabled falls on that category. So you can then do an override. An override will say, well, I want to allow Great Goose because we're partners with that company. We're providing IT services to that company. And uh, we need to allow that. But 
globally, I am blocking anything that has to do with alcohol, but I am allowing uh, this vodka company. So basically, I can put an override and say allow. Same with block. The block will be the opposite. So if I am allowing in auctions, right, I'm allowing globally to go to every single website. I'm allowing access for our internal users to every single website that relates to auctions. But I want to block eBay, which is an auction website. I can block that individually. And that's how you configure your uh, filtering. You have a, glob a global category. You just allow that or deny or you know block or allow globally. But then you might want to have a website that you don't necessarily want to allow globally. You can override it here. And you put the list of specific websites that might be allowed here. But then I'm just going to overwrite for that particular one. And then the action on the block list is to block. And then the allowed is obviously allowed. So we'll press OK. And now we need to enable that policy on my inside to outside by going into policies and clicking inside to internet and then going to actions and then URL filtering corp URL filter global and we'll press OK. Now if we scroll all the way to the right now we have that icon in our profiles column saying that I am attached to the URL filtering profile corp URL filter global and anyone that comes from the inside to the outside will be um, enforced by this URL filtering profile. Okay, so we just configure that. And uh, let's go ahead and do the same for guests. And for guests, we can, we can do something that is very common. So on the guest network, you're allowing guest users to use your internet. But, you know, there's people that are very, uh, they're bandwidth hoggers. They want to take advantage of that and start downloading large files or, lo or movies or just streaming stuff. You want people to have internet access. You don't want people to take all your bandwidth, right? And one way to limit that type of traffic is by blocking those particular websites. So let's go back onto objects. URL filtering, I'm gonna create another one. And in my case, I am still going to block, block here. I am going to block here. I am going to block adult. And you know what? I want to look for peer-to-peer. -peer. So that's a very good case scenario where people might be downloading torrents. We want to block that for the guest side. And we want to block streaming media. Let's go ahead and block. And that's basically it. With this profile, I am allowing my guest users to go outside, but I am blocking them from going to adult websites, anything that has to do with drugs, and anything that is streaming media, like uh, Netflix, YouTube, etc., and also from downloading or connecting to peer-to-peer -peer networks. We'll press OK. I have a guest URL filter profile. I'm going with this profile to limit our guest wireless network from reaching those resources. So let's go back onto policies, guest internet access, and on actions, I am going to select that URL filter, which is guest URL filter, and press OK. And now we have our guest profile enabled. Okay. Finally, we're going to block foul access from zone to zone. It means uh, I'm going to block anyone from downloading a specific file format or uploading a specific file format by creating a file blocking profile. We're going to go into objects. I'm going to go to file blocking. We have a predefined file blocking profile. And this is the file types that are going to be blocked. You can see the action here. And then anything else. This is continuous, so don't actually tell me that someone is actually downloading this type of file in, in my alert settings. So let's go ahead and click on add. I'm going to create a custom one. This will be my global corp, my corp file block profile. And I'm going to click add. I'm going to say extension one, matching any applications. And you can be based on custom applications. So if the traffic matches a specific application, you can type it there. In my case, I'm just going to say any. And then this is where. I am going to select a particular format. In my case, I want to block executables in both directions, either download or upload, and my action will be blocked. And I can make this more relevant to our case executable. I can block torrent. Well, let's go ahead and see if uh, torrent is an option here. So we'll click add. 
Now we'll click go down, and there you have it. So now I am blocking torrent, and I can actually nest couple inside the same policy. So in case you just want to make one option inside the profile, and then select a handful of file types that will be blocked, then I can, for example, select zip, and there you go. So now the torrent category blocks torrent and zip. Let's go ahead and change this to block. We'll press OK, and we're done with the profile. Now let's go back onto the policy and enable that on our corp network. We'll click the policy. Let's go to actions, file blocking, and we're going to select our custom one. We'll press OK, and we are done. If we scroll all the way to the right, now we have a file blocking profile that will block people from downloading executables downloading torrent files because this will download not the actual content because you know torrent you need a peer-to-peer -peer client that will download the actual data that is referenced on that torrent file but this is to avoid someone from downloading the actual torrent file that will basically link in their peer-to-peer -peer program to download the actual data and we're also going to block download zip um, from my inside to outside and this is a good way to limit what gets uploaded or downloaded in your environment from your internal users. Okay, everyone, in our next video, we're going to be configuring a denial of service protection profile. Thank you for watching.